Today we will demonstrate how to do the object data upload flow in a Gen3 data commons and how to link it to appropriate data in the graph data model as well. So to start, we'll take one of our data commons and we will show what we're trying to do. And so here we've set up a little brief demo graph that's uh, pretty straightforward. So we just have a project, a study, a subject, an imaging study, and an imaging exam. And now we actually want to add the object files from the imaging exam. So this would be like the CT scans or the x-rays or the slices of those scans. And so we will add in a core metadata collection to first link the data files to. So the core metadata collection contains just the, the bare minimum information that's needed to be able to submit the files to the graph and to also to share them out into the world. And then later we will show how to actually link them fully into the graph as this imaging file node as well. So let's get started. I will first create the core metadata collection and I will just do that here using the uh, form submission tool. So here you can see the different properties that we have to fill out. So even though these aren't required, um, it might be useful to just fill them in for demo purposes. So we'll say our contributor is the Gen3 demo. Our creator is CTDS plan 10, um, a demo core metadata collection. Um, we'll have to link it to the appropriate project code and so in this case the project is demo one we have to add in our submitter id so this can be demo this can be core metadata collection demo one let's see if we can just go ahead and upload this from the form here click submit we can see that that succeeded and we successfully created our core metadata collection and so now if I look at the graph, you can see that we have a new core metadata collection here. So now I will start the process of actually uploading the data files. And so to do that, we actually need to use the Gen3 client. So the Gen3 client is used when you're trying to download files from a data commons or upload files to a data commons. And it's used so that you can more efficiently move data outside of a browser and so that you can resume downloads um, and those sorts of things. So we make the data client available on our GitHub. Um, there's a UC CETUS uh, organization and then it's just CETUS-data client right now. And here you would go into the releases and you would download the latest release for, you can check the latest release over here, for your appropriate operating system. In this case, I am on Mac OS X. So I'll go ahead and download that here. I'm downloading that uh, to my local file system, so I've got that now. And so now I can go ahead and unzip that in the uh, downloads folder here. So I'll just do that. And so now you'll see I have a Gen3 client executable here. So that's one step. And then the next thing that we need is our credentials. So we have to have credentials that we can load in to the data client so that we can actually um, use it in an authenticated manner against the data commons. So I'll go back to the data commons. I will go to profile. I will go to create API key. This creates a, the API key that we need. In this case, I will download JSON. So this is going to download a credentials.json file for me as well. And so if we go back and look at our file system again, we will see that here now. So now we have the credentials.json file, great. So now we will actually upload the data. And so to do that, I will switch over to the terminal. And the first thing we need to do is actually to configure the Gen3 client with our credentials. So I'll just go ahead and do that here configure profile so this is just a name we set so i'm going to call it demo cred is the credentials file we want to pass in so i will call it uh, credentials.json which is what was downloaded uh, the api endpoint is the address for our commons so i will just go ahead and fill that in here now as well so we got that all set now we can actually upload our files, so it's just gen3 client upload, 
profiles, the one we just made called demo. Upload path is where our images are actually at. So in this case, they're in my local folder and they're .png files. So I will just go ahead and upload them here. So now you can see them um, uploading to the data commons. You can also see that once they're successfully uploaded, they are issued uh, GUIDs that are used here as well. So now I can switch back to my browser. I can go back to the data submission page. And now I see this box here that says map my files. And I see that there are two files available for mapping. So I'm just going to click here on map my files. I can see the two files here. I see their names. I see the file sizes. I see that they're in the ready status. Um, you might also see um, a not ready status. And that just means if they're large files, that we're still doing some initial processing on them on the, the backend side um, to generate the necessary information so that you can map them. So now I'll go ahead and select all of them. I'll click map my files. I'll go here. I will select the project, which is demo one. I will say these are imaging files. So the data format, these are just strings that I'll fill in. So I will say these are PNGs. And then I will say that these are body scans, for example. Um, you know, the data category is free text. You're supposed to fill that in as you sort of desire. Um, if you were doing x-ray slices or CT scans, you could fill that in as well. So now we want to select our core metadata collection to link them to. So I will just select the core metadata collection that you saw me create earlier on. So now we've filled all that out, we're ready to submit. So I'll just go ahead and click that here to have them mapped. And you'll see it tells us that two files were successfully mapped. Okay, great. So now if I go back and I look at the graph for our project again, I should see um, imaging files that are linked to the core metadata collection. And that's actually exactly what I see here. So we're pretty happy with that and that's a success. Now at this point, the data is available for downloading. So if I go to the files browser page here, and then I can come over here and I can filter to our demo project to see if we have some imaging files and we do, it sees the two files. And so now I should be able to download them as well. Sure enough, it gives me the download page and it tells me the information about this. And so this information here that you're seeing here is filled in from the core metadata collection. And so that's why we like to link to that so that you have this very basic information on how you would actually cite this file uh, if you wanted to cite it in a publication or you know elsewhere in your research. You can also just click the download button and that will start the download for the file. Um, and then you can, of course, open the file up now that it's on your local disk. Um, so that's a success. You've made the data successfully available inside your data commons. However, you may still want to actually go ahead and complete the link to the rest of the graph to make the data even more discoverable. And so the reason you would do this is now to associate these imaging files with the actual subject and with the image study and imaging exam that they actually came from. And so the way to do that is much more aligned with the way that you submit the other data in the graph. And so we actually need to update the links on these imaging file nodes so that they are linked to the appropriate uh, imaging exam. And so one way we can do that is to go browse all the imaging files that we just submitted. And then there's a download all TSV button. I will just go ahead and click on that here. And this will give me the TSV file so that I can update the links. So now we have that file saved. I can go ahead and open that. And so you can see here, uh, I just opened the file in text edit here so you can see sort of what's in it. But actually it's a little bit difficult to edit TSV files in text edit. So I will actually open it in Excel so that we can edit it and add in the link to the imaging exams. 
So now I've opened the file up in Excel here so that you can see it a little bit better so that it's easier to see all the columns. So you can see the information that was filled in here. Um, it includes the information we entered in the form and also includes the file size and the MD5 sum, the hash that was computed on the back end. We have the data GUID here as well. Um, we have the core metadata collection ID and we have the um, submitter ID for that. But we also have the imaging exams and the imaging exam submitter ID. So in this case, I can go ahead and fill this in based on the submitter ID I used in creating the graph uh, node for the imaging exam. So I will go ahead and look at what I did for that here, and I will see that I called this demo imaging exam one. So I'll actually just copy that and then go over here again to Excel and I will paste that in. So I go ahead and do that. So now we've updated our TSV file. I can just save this. So now I can go back to our project, our demo one project. This time I can upload a file. I will pick the TSV file I just updated um, and the, the imaging um, files. And so here you can see that it did um, save the submitter IDs and I noticed I just made an error when I was using Excel um, and it auto filled and it incremented the um, imaging exam ID. So I'm just going to correct that here um, in the display and I'll go ahead and submit this and hopefully it'll work and it did. It successfully updated those two entries in the imaging file. And so now when you look at the graph, you'll see that our imaging file is linked both to the core metadata collection as well as to the imaging exam. So now this data is available to be searched for in uh, both fashions. You can find the files via the core metadata collection, but you can also find them by searching by subject and then associated uh, imaging files.